So I don't really think this video is going to be too long because arrays and lists are pretty easy to understand. But to give a basic rundown, arrays and lists are basically collections of objects organized into a list that you can index with an integer. To get started, we're going to create a new C-sharp script and I'm going to just going to call this uh, arrays and I'm going to put this on my example game object real quick. There you go. And we can get coding. All right. So first, let's go over the array. And to make an array, you basically take a regular variable. Uh, like, for example, let's say I want to have a public, whoops, a public uh, int. And I can call this numbers. And to make this into an array, all you do is put two square brackets after the type of your variable. So here I have a public int numbers and I put two square brackets after the type to indicate that this is an array. And to actually initialize your array, instead of doing like numbers equals one, since it is now kind of like a list of objects, it needs to be initialized like a class or a struct. So to do that, we do new int and our two square brackets and put your semicolon at the end. And now we need to put in a size for our array. and uh, we could do a size of three and there you go you've just created a or an array that is the size of three elements and to index these elements you can either do numbers and then put your two square brackets and put in an index and the way we index arrays in C sharp is we take the number of the element that we want so let's say we want the first element and we subtract it by one so instead of saying first element we say the zeroth element so if I, if I want to get the first element I just put in zero and yeah it's pretty weird but that's how C sharp really works um, if you want to uh, if you're looping through an array you'd start with zero instead of one but that's really just how it is so we have numbers zero so we're indexing or getting our first element in our array that is three elements long and we can assign this to whatever we want so I can just do one and we can do it for the rest of the elements so I get the first element set it to one get the second element set it to two and the third element and set it to three now to test this we can debug.log this but in order to debug.log and arrays elements we're going to have to loop through all the elements and then debug.log um, with a pointer and to do that we can use a for loop and the for loop is something we went over uh, I think one video ago one or two videos videos ago it covered it in my loops video and to give you guys a refresher to make a for loop you type in for put in your two parentheses and first create your pointer here so I'll do int i is equal to zero I'm starting at zero because once again uh, when we index arrays, the first element starts at zero. So we have int i equals to zero, and we do it till i is less than the numbers dot length. And when we get the length of an array, it gets the real number of elements. So it doesn't start at zero and then go to two. It actually does three because there are in total three elements. So there. So that's why we're doing less than the numbers dot length. And every time it loops, we increment the pointer. All right, so now we have a complete for loop that uh, has a, that has a pointer for us that loops through all the elements in our numbers array. Now we can just debug.log this. So we can just do debug.log uh, numbers i. Put that into your square brackets there. That we can also put variables inside of our square brackets. And just like that, there. Now what we do is we create a new array that is that has three elements in it and we go through each element and we assign them a number from one to three and then we debug.log all the numbers using a for loop to have a pointer go over every single element in our given array so now if we go back into unity and we hit play we go to the console you can now see that it said one two and three and that's because we went over every single element and we just debug.log their assigned value and in the start method we assigned each element to one two and three now before we get into lists this is what arrays look like in the inspector 
they look like this and you can like change their size and you can manually assign whatever you want to each element here and this is the same as the what the list would look like in the inspector and speaking of lists we can now get onto lists so the big difference between arrays and lists is that lists have a dynamic size and what I mean by that is you can continually add elements to a list and it won't give you any error and there's no limit arrays on the other hand you have to initialize it with a given size like um, in earlier in the video when we were creating our array we had to do a new int and then yeah we had to do a new int and then put in our square brackets and put in a specified size and with that size that we give the array we cannot go over it so we cannot index above that size or nor can we add to the size so that is one big difference between arrays and lists so to create a list what you do is just like your regular variable you put in public or public or private whatever you prefer and then the type of the variable and the type I want to work with here is list and after the type you just put in your name so I guess I could do my list and a list is a generic type and what that means is it has this fancy greater than and less than sign kind of putting kind of prompting us to put something in between this like a type and if I hover over it if I can there you could see T the T here the T right here is basically any type we can put in here that will give the list a designated type to work with so once again I'm just gonna work with integers so I can just put in the list int and there you go and once again before we use our list we have to initialize it so what we do is my list equals a new list of integer there you go that is how you initialize a list and any uh, generic type so a queue a dictionary all of those stuff would have to be initialized like this before you actually use them so since lists have a dynamic size, there are functions on the list that can let us add in new elements to increase the size. So right now, since this is an empty list, it currently has a size of zero, meaning that there's just nothing on it. So to add on to it, we just do my list dot add. And in here we can put in uh, uh, an instance of our type. And in this case, since it's an integer, I can just put one and I can just go on to two and three here two three there you go so here what I'm doing instead of indexing with, through the list like what we do in the array uh, since this doesn't have a fixed size and it can be uh, changed uh, throughout the code we're just gonna use dot add to increase the size and assign that new element that we inserted into our list a default value and its default value for this element would be one this would be two and three and lists can also be indexed the same way as arrays and to show that I'm gonna do the for loop again to debug.log all of the elements in our list so I already worked made the for now we can put in our parentheses and do int i is equal to zero as this is our pointer i is less than my list dot count yeah so uh, lists uh, use the keyword count to get the size of the list and not uh, length and after that we just increment our pointer so it goes over all of the elements now I can just debug.log all these things by doing debug.log and then put in my list and with the two square brackets I can index a certain element within my dynamic list and I can just put I in here alright now if we go back into unity and we can test this and we go hit play uh, and the same output comes from when we were doing the arrays now one more thing I want to go over is the for each loop. So the for each loop is a loop that is specifically designed to iterate over lists and arrays. So to create a for each loop, we do for each and then our two parentheses. And instead of putting in our two uh, semicolons like this, like creating a variable for the pointer, checking its condition, and then incrementing the pointer, all we do is just create a variable in here so uh, we do uh, int and call this my number 
and then after this we put in the keyword in to show that we are going over every single integer within a certain list of the same type so in this case my list and we put in our two curly brackets here what this will do it will go over every single element within our list and it will return this variable for each loop for us to use so I can now just do debug.log my number and the same effect would happen just like us using a for loop with a pointer so now let's go back into unity to test this and if we hit play you'll see it is also the same output now which one is faster the for loop or the for each loop and according to a blog post from someone that benchmarked this the for loop is basically much faster than using the for each loop on a list or an array so in most cases you'd want to use the for loop instead of the for each loop and that is all i have for this video uh, i hope you learned something new i hope i maybe cleared up some concepts for you on how to do things with arrays and lists and like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video goodbye <laughs>